Namaste and hello. You are watching Vibes of India. I am Sakshi Singh. Today we have with us a very known and respected personality, Dr. Tejas Patel, a cardiologist from Ahmedabad, India. He have also won Padma Shri Award by Government of India and Dr. B C Roy Award, which is the highest medical award in India. Uh, so, Dr. Tejas Patel, you are a very known and respected cardiologist in India. I have a very personal question for you. Uh, if you don't mind, may I ask? Yeah, please go ahead. So, I want to know that how you keep your heart so fit. See, I am a cardiologist practicing since now almost thirty-two years. You know, and I think everybody knows that heart being. the engine for the body yes the heart, the most important thing we have to think of is the heart health to keep ourselves alive and then to keep ourselves healthy and to maintain the health throughout overall health so unfortunately many of the doctor friends you know they advise but they are not able to put it in practice you know mm. how to manage the time for the proper health of the heart and body for that you have to exercise you have to do stress management you have to have good eating habit yes and so on and so forth uh, i have been very passionate about this thing since when i was a child my father was a physician he used to advise me that your health uh, is you know you have to maintain yourself and as a doctor doctor as the doctor grows in age doctor can be more helpful to the patient more experience so you can help more patients so longer you live and healthier you live you are able to practice since very long till when you are in 70s or 80s or whatever yeah. and for that you have to positively maintain your health and i it it stuck me in my mind and since then since childhood i used to do some or other exercises regularly so apart since from childhood uh, sorry since childhood you always wanted oh, to be a doctor uh, that is for sure yes But and then I I I was also clear that I I am going to be a cardiologist since wow. when I was in tenth standard. You never had any other hobbies no. or like. No, any... I had hobbies: reading, huh. moving around, yeah. playing, doing mischief. All these <laughs> were the part of my hobbies. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you have healed some serious, challenging, and very delicate cases, as we all know. Can you tell me and share some details about uh, such cases you found very, like, hard? See, I cannot, uh, uh, you know, disclose these things mm. because it is not good and it is unethical. But one thing I must tell you that every time I have worked on a very sick patient. Mm. may the patient be a vip patient or may the patient be a regular patient you know that there, there are always catecholamine surgeries and there is always a stress level as i grew in in my experience i was able to handle the stress pretty well wow and nowadays i am able to handle it even well but one thing i tell you whenever i have worked on dying patient i personally feel that i am losing some hours or maybe a few days of my life because that stress i have to take yes. because after all patient is put you know trusting us for his or her life yes so we have to go all out to help and do our best but this is the way of life for any interventional cardiologist who is involved in complicated procedures yes true So, Doctor Patel, why is it that uh, we are increasing seeing young people dying of heart attack? It's a good question. Actually, you know, this question has been thro- thrown to me in different forums, mm. even in different medical forums and non-medical forums. So, it's a paradox actually. Now, 
on one hand you are getting more and more younger people getting afflicted with heart problems and there may be some deaths happening here and there and which are being reported in the media in the print media or electronic media or in social on social media and that can lead to a lot of increase in the anxiety levels among the young people mm-hmm. and even among the parents i personally feel that the new generation this generation of young people is more health conscious as compared to what we were in our time or what our parents were in their time mm. that is for sure because many of them are gymming many of them are doing exercise they want to look good and to look good they are trying their level best yes. to maintain the body and everything and maintain inches and this is uniformly true for both uh, boys and girls right now why then this happens despite doing this probably there is significant peer pressure of performance may one be a student may one be in the new job or new profession or new business mm-hmm. or may one be in an established business everybody is running after their goal yes. and they are there is a fierce competition and that leads to peer pressure of performance and that leads to lot of catecholamine the bad hormone surges in the body and that leads to some damage to the vessels as well as the heart the inflammation increases and that can lead to enhancement of this process or even if there are some borderline blocks there are higher chances of block getting the that those blocks getting ruptured and uh, leading to you know rough surface leading to total occlusion of the artery and heart attack and maybe death or maybe uh, morbidity yeah. so that is one part of the story secondly the food habits i think the young generation is very conscious about the body the inches exercise everything but i don't think they are as conscious and about the food habit especially in gujarat uh, no it no. is uniform a uniform I, okay you know, everybody likes fast food everybody likes the food which has lot of simple sugar mm. and trans fat that is very very bad for the heart and the body vessels in total so because and that is why i am i explain all my patients what food one should eat yeah. so by and large the food which is quite friendly to your tongue is by and large it is unfriendly to your heart and the food which is most of the time quite unfriendly to your tongue or not maybe okay to your tongue may be very good for your heart mm-hmm. because the antioxidants the food containing antioxidants is very good for your heart and vessels but th- that food has stringent taste and you may not like mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know i uh, you see jamun or you see pomegranate and all those you know you go on chewing and there is some taste which you feel okay you want to eat but you don't want to eat much, much. something yes. like that yes and the food which is crispy or crunchy and which is sweet or maybe that you love it, right yes. and you know that every time you fry Uh, particularly in in the oil the first time there is some development of trans fat and each subsequent time you fry the percentage or the amount of trans fat increases you know significantly and that is very very dangerous for you know, you know, the heart and vessel and similarly simple sugar like if i tell you to eat mango mm. and if you are hungry and if you have alfonso or a good kesar mango you will eat 3 4 without any problem mm. and you will love to eat more but if at the same time if i give you orange you may be be okay with one or two and then it's okay fine so all those fruits which contain lot of simple sugar 
people love to eat because yeah. that suits your taste but and complex sugar food which contains complex sugar you like but you don't like to eat too much, too much so yes. this is the problem true so dr patel can you tell us about a specific pathological laboratory test if there are any to determine one's chances of getting a heart attack look here if anybody nowadays when when i was a medical student anybody coming with heart attack you know at the age which is maybe around 50 55 we were surprised oh it's very young age yeah. something like that but then Uh, you know, every subsequent decade when I became MD in late eighties, you know, people with fifty were coming regularly, and then in in DM cardiology I did, and then I was assistant professor in the early nineties there in civil hospital, which is you and me. Yes. People in their forties, late forties, were used to come, and then every decade, you know, decade, like in two thousand thirty-five. Thirty-seven, they were coming, and nowadays even twenty-five, thirty-year-old boys and girls are coming with the heart problems. So this is a very concerning and very very disturbing problem, not only for the cardiologists who are treating, but as a society overall, it's not a good happening. Something really needs to be done. Yes, and uh, I think that uh, lifestyle modification. and uh, preventive measures are going to be the mainstay treatment i tell you fantastic treatments are available mm. despite all these you know before independence you know that uh, the air was clean in india the food was organic because uh, uh, no fertilizer or other yes, things were used all knowledge. natural right everything people used to work people yes. used to walk a lot people used to because there were no means of uh, all uh, you know entertainment or nothing much mm. still just understand this thing the average life span of a male was what about 48 49 50 and average life span of a female was 51 52 okay. and despite all this nowadays you eat you know a lot of food with lot of artificial fertilizer you know which has been which has been grown in artificial fertilizer yes. hardly any organic thing the air quality is not good and uh, uh, even the fast food and all those things That's they are really bad still the life span average life span of an indian male Increase. is more than 70 71 72 mm-hmm. and female is nearly 73 74 or whatever so that is because of the treatment the mm. treatment is very good and even if the problem happens you know most of the time you are able to bring the patient out of that mess but you know more and more i treat this patient and examine this patient i feel that now the focus should be find the treatment the development is research and development must continue to get the best of the treatment and new treatment to reduce the incidence of morbidity and mortality mm. but the, there has to be lot of research and you know lot of things to be done i personally feel in prevention aspect true which is should which be. should be the mainstay in managing this problem because if you will prevent then you don't have to you can delay care. it yes. you can prevent it you can delay it and you know patient can pass the 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 society you can have a healthy society down the line in one or two decades some goal you know something needs to be directed you know to do all these things yeah. yes even we have seen that there are some old people whose heart condition happens to be absolutely fine but there are some very young and middle aged people whose heart health is at stake yeah. so why is it so that old people are healthy as you said that previously it was like ki their span was less than the people yeah. of now let me tell you i forgot to tell you one thing that one very important factor we have, we have not discussed is genetics okay if you have acquired good genes mm. you know from your parents and forefathers 
anyway even if you indulge you are going to live long and if you have acquired bad side your parents have problem parents parents have also problem then you are very vulnerable to develop the problem develop because spouse. you know you have some control over choosing your spouse but no control over choosing your parents so that risk factor is a very very strong risk factor one has to understand so how to how to you know uh, strike the balance if you are at a very high risk genetic risk so be careful since beginning since when you are young and just don't try to deviate too much in your you know lifestyle okay uh, like from which age will you suggest that uh, the person or jinke parents ko bhi hai ye problem they should take care of themselves is there any particular yes, time as early as possible as early yes. as possible because uh, this process for this in our book one of the famous pathologist boyd whose textbook we used to read in second mbbs the sentence given the development of blockage in the heart arteries and other arteries the sentence you know the chapter starts with one sentence that it is a song sung in the cradle ends in the grave so the process starts since yes. when you you take your birth and it ends when you end your life okay and i believe that i have heard of this widow maker heart attack which is very dangerous and serious a uh, thing so is it uh, true that it is very dangerous and if it is so can you tell us that how to prevent it because See, recently you have to identify the problem any heart attack can kill a person even okay. if it is a small artery but if it is a main artery block and if something goes wrong there there are there are higher chances but even with small artery the rhythm, rhythm disturbances can kill a patient so one has to be very very particular about getting one self check if you are living a healthy life then also maybe after the age of 40 or 45 get your basic cardiac workup done not angiography but the basic non invasive work and your blood profile etc because nowadays diabetes is also a, you know a household affair every house has diabetes and every alternate or third person is either diabetic or pre diabetic so unfortunately india is going to be you know the world capital of diabetes which is not a good thing and which is not a thing for which we should be proud of yeah so looking at all these one has to get oneself checked and try to pick up the problem before it creates a damage so stress is the main problem you think uh, is stress is one of the major problems major uncontrolled problem. sugar uncontrolled blood pressure mm. smoking tobacco consumption in any form this all very bad and the bad food habits sedentary life all these obesity all these are very significant risk factors okay and is there any statistics to prove whether males or females are more prone to it it's a good question you know if you know this question you know uh, if i have faced this question before 30 or 40 years or 25 years i would have been very confident that pre pre menopausal women are practically immune Mm. to this problem mm. and it all the problem starts only after menopause and the males are you know vulnerable at certain age and thereafter but nowadays it is not true we come across heart uh, ailments and circulation issues in a female who is 35 or 40 and all those uh, there are certain risk factors like oral contraceptive pills and then i think it is a very unfortunate happening but smoking incidence of smoking in female have also gone up yeah so which is not a good thing so all these things and then of course many female you know nowadays are mm. not housewives yes. you know they are not homemakers they yes. they are professional they are working they are working women so again significant pressure peer pressure of performance mm, again all those So uh, for the last to end this I have this question that what are the three simple most tips you can give to our viewers to have a great heart What should I say I personally feel 
that how busy you are 24 hours in a day is a pretty long time. You have to have one hour for your workout, whatever you do. You have to maintain good diet and food habits. And then, very importantly, one has to do a good stress management. You have to know how to hold your nerves, basic pranayam practice, shavasana, all these things. Yoga. Yeah. And yogic asana, if you can do, spend some time, try to cool down. And another important thing, if you have a very, very busy schedule during your work time, you know, spend some time for yourself between, in between, about 25 or 30 minutes where you can take your small lunch in 5-10 minutes and then 5-10 to 10 minutes of a good power nap. Yeah. These are small, small things which can, you know, which can preserve you and get you going for a very, very long, long time. Thank you so much, My Dr. Pajir, for giving us Thank wonderful you. tips. Thank it you. was lovely.